Each year since 2015, the Lord has given our ministry a spoken word for the upcoming year. These spoken words are meant to operate like a lamppost or a guiding post for that year. Well, today we're going to review the spoken word the Lord has given us for 2020. Get ready. Hey, what's up guys? This is Neil with Neil Reyes Ministries, and I want to welcome you to today's episode of Champions Walk. Today we have a very special episode. Today I'm going to be reading to you the spoken word that God has delivered us for the year of 2020. Man, I'm going to tell you, I'm so pumped up about this word. You know, each year starting in 2015, the Lord has given us a spoken word through this ministry for the year to come. And these words always operate like a guiding post or a lamppost for us. It's a, it's a word of guidance for that year. But as believers, we have a responsibility to play as well within those spoken words. What I want to do is open up in prayer, and then we're going to get right into this teaching. Father God, I come before you, Lord, and thank you for the opportunity to be able to speak to your children. Lord, I thank you that as I speak, the words that flow out of my mouth are all of you, Lord, and none of me, and that it's ministering to the children who are watching this. When I say the children, I'm talking about your people, Father. Lord, I thank you that they listen with open hearts and open ears, open to the word that you have for them for the year of 2020, and that as I speak today and deliver this word, it's going to bring comfort, it's going to bring hope, and in the name of Jesus, I'm believing it's going to bring guidance for them. I'm believing that they'll come before you with open hearts and with all of their hearts seeking you and asking you what their part is to play within this spoken word so that they can step into the fullness of it and that they'll also understand and comprehend that when spoken words, prophetic words like this are given, they're not just for that year, but they're beginning for that time and they reach into the future. Father, I thank you for your goodness and I thank you for your clarity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, praise God. Now, there's some things I just covered in prayer there, and I'll start with that just to bring some clarity. So when we have spoken words, whether that's through this ministry or through another, when God gives us prophetic words about a year, in other words, when someone gives a banner over a year, when they speak something over a year, it's important to understand that that spoken word is not activated only for that year. In other words, this spoken word for 2020 doesn't mean that it begins January 1st and then ends December 31st in 2020. This spoken word will go into effect for the beginning of January 1st, 2020, and it will grow like a living word into the future. In other words, God's word, His living word never stops growing. It just continues to grow. And it's not like it's something like a bell where you hit it hard and it's loud at first, but then kind of fades away. No, this is a word that continues to grow into the future. Now, another thing to understand is sometimes people ask, well, how come we have spoken words from multiple ministries? You know, I listened to such and such and he gave a word, but he called it something different. And I listened to sister such and such and they gave a word and they said it was something different. Why is that? How come there's so many different spoken words? Well, one of the things I want you to understand is, and I recognize this as a believer, in today's time, in today's time that we're living, there are more spoken words that are coming out right now than we've ever had before. Why is that? Well, let's look at that from a couple angles. First of all, because of the increase in technology and growth of technology, spoken words are able to be delivered to us easier than they ever have been in the past. However, we have to understand a very important principle. God's Word talks about in the end times that His Spirit would pour out upon all flesh. That means young or old, male or female, it doesn't matter. 
And as we're approaching the end of times, and we're in the last days, we're in the last of the last days, praise God. But in these last days, the closer we get to the end, God's word is pouring out in more abundance on more people to get his word out, to get the bride ready. Who's the bride? The bride is the bride of Christ. That's the church of Christ. And when I'm talking about the church of Christ, we're talking about regardless of your denomination. I'm talking about if you're a believer, a believer who is born again and saved by God's word. And found in Romans 10, 9, and 10 that if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, then you've been born again. Some people refer to that as being saved. Your name has been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. If you're a believer, you're part of the bride. And if you're the bride, the church of Christ, God is coming back for us and He's cleaning us up. Praise God. But along the way, He's given us some encouragement. And that encouragement is often found through spoken words like He's given us. Now, another thing to understand, sometimes you'll have believers as the end of the year approaches, you know, they're almost looking like they would treat a New Year's resolution. They start looking for different spoken words. They'll turn around and start jumping on YouTube or jumping on the TV and they'll say, okay, I like this one and I like this one. That one I don't like so much, but I like this one. And that's not how that works. You know, we have a responsibility as believers and our part, what do we play with these spoken words? When God gives a spoken word to a ministry, and sometimes the titles are different. Sometimes he'll say it's the year of one thing to one person and the year of, the, of something else to a whole different person. And people say, well, why is that? Well, overall, when you look at spoken words, they should complement each other and lock into each other. But at the same time, you have to understand that people who operate in the five offices of the church, we're talking people who are teachers, people who are prophets, people who are evangelists, people who are uh, pastors, you know, the different types of things, apostles and stuff out there, the five offices. The Lord will speak to the body through these people. And as He speaks to the body through these people, He gives a message and a ministry, sometimes different for each person through these people. And when he gives a spoken word to each of these people, he intends for the people who are focused on their teachings to be able to connect to the fullness of that spoken word throughout the year. Because the things he'll begin to teach or feed those teachers, those people who are speaking, he'll fulfill these words through them. But when we hear spoken words as believers, we're not to go plop ourselves on the couch and just sit there and wait for it to come to pass. No, we have a responsibility in that. And our responsibility as believers is sometimes praying it to come to pass, but also sometimes it's asking the Lord, Lord, what's my role in this situation? What would you have me do as your child in this? You know, sometimes these come with specific instruction or he'll give us additional instruction as we seek him. But we're to keep these words before us. You know, Habakkuk 2.2 says to write the vision and make it plain. So that anyone who were to pass by could see the vision and run with it. Meaning that it's in front of you, it's written clearly, and it's so simple and easy to follow. But oftentimes as believers, we'll see bodies or parts of the body of Christ that'll turn around and they'll get into a spoken word. And it's fresh for them for the first couple of weeks of the new year. But after that, they kind of drift from it and quit paying attention. I'm going to tell you as believers, it's important to keep it in front of you all year long. That being said, I want to share with you the spoken word that the Lord has given us through this ministry for 2020. 2020 will be known as the year of visions, victories, and awakenings. I'm going to say that again. 2020 will be known as the year of visions, victories, and awakenings. I want to go ahead and read it to you and you can follow along on the screen. We'll have it up so you can follow with us. Let's go ahead and get into this word and then we'll begin to break it down. 2020 will be known as the year of visions, victories, and awakenings. 2020 will be known as the year of visions, victories, and awakenings. Visions, victories, and awakenings, saith the Lord. My, in my body, I will move forth across this land, across this land and across the waters, and my voice will touch those who have been ignoring it and those who have not been touched by it. My voice will reach out and impart new ways and new ideas to people. New hope is descending upon the land right now, saith the Lord. And as I speak, 
Hearts are coming back to the truth. Minds that have been in bondage with hard yokes, hardness, and seared hearts will be renewed in my time frame, saith the Lord. I am blessing the body of Christ with new visions of the future. Some will see new visions of things to come. Some will see visions of things that are going to happen. Some will see visions of things they will need to stand against and change through prayer, being vigilant with the voice of prayer in the house of faith. Some will see visions of things to come that will serve as a witness to them to build their faith and the faith of those around them. And some will see things to come of visions of things that could be that they will need to stand on in faith and faithfully bring about with their prayer and call it to come to pass. For I have given you the ability, as found in my word, to call things not as they were, but as they are meant to be. What about victory, says the Lord? In 2020 and the years to come, my believers, my children, my select, my elect children will receive victories in new areas that they have not seen victory in up until now. I have told you as your God to bring me and keep me in remembrance of my word, not from a disrespectful nature and not because I have forgotten what my word says or what I've said I will do, but because it's always in front of me. But in order to bring it to pass, you must keep it in front of you. For I have given you the voice of faith, saith the Lord. I have given you authority through your words. And with your words and with that faith, you are to call things not as they are, but as they are meant to be. And you are to call these things to pass. Victory is here, saith the Lord. 2020 will be known as the year of great, great victory, saith the Lord. Great victory over things that you've been challenged with. Great victory over things that you've been faced with. In areas where you've been weak and had weakness, just feel like it was knocking you down, you will see victory and victory is yours. And victory is here to stay, saith the Lord. There are things that are happening within this world. Things that are happening within governments and municipalities and within systems that people said would never change. That people said would never happen. You step back and watch because in this year of 2020 and the time to come, I'm going to bring victory to areas where people thought there could never bring victory. And I'm going to do it because as God, as your sovereign, as your God, your sovereign God, I'm in the wowing business. And these will be signs and wonders to the unbelievers. And to the believer, to my faithful child, this will be a sign of encouragement to keep on keeping on, saith the Lord. What about awakening? In the year of 2020 will come new awakenings to my word. New awakenings to my faith. New awakening to my ways of doing things. And for those who turn around and heed those words, awakening is before you. You will see awakening between your families. You will see awakening at your job sites. You will see awakening in the court systems. You will see awakenings in the lawmakers. You will see awakening spread across the land. There is a spirit of Antichrist that is operating in this world today. But my awakening will overcome and shadow that. My awakening is moving so strong that I will turn around and raise up an army to me. An army that's willing to speak my voice in truth. My voice that is found in my word. For I am looking for my sheep who hearken to my words. For my sheep, my children know my voice, and they hear it, and they hearken unto it. They lean into it. They faithfully apply it to their lives, and faithfully look to operate in it. 
2020 and the years beyond will be known as a time of great awakening. The books, the record books of heaven have been opened, and it has been documented in it that in the year of 2020, the great awakening began and took place. I will be bringing awakening to systems and to municipalities, to courthouses, to lawmakers, and to people in the everyday street. I will be bringing an awakening to my ways. People who have ran from me for far too long and who have avoided me, who have shunned my name and who have refused to acknowledge me, in this time they will not have a choice. For I am the King of kings and Lord of lords. And in my word I state that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. Now is the time of the great awakening. Now is the time for you to come back to me. For there is a great soul harvest that is operating as we speak. The church body has been crying out for revival. But even though they've been crying out for revival, they've only been seeing the vapors of it. But we have now entered a time of awakening, and with that awakening there will be such a thirst across the land for my presence, such a thirst across the land for my word, for my voice to be heard, that it will not be able to be quenched by any other voice. No cheap imitator can take my place. No cheap imitation can replace the truth of my words. No cheap imitator can ever produce my presence. My hand is upon you, my church, as my elect. In this year of 2020, awakening is occurring. And those who you've been praying for, for the families that have been standing in agreement that because they're saved, their whole household is saved, and they've been faithfully calling for their family to come to know me, to come to know me as their Lord and Savior through my Son, Jesus Christ, to come to know my kingdom, I speak over them that awakening is now, saith the Lord. 2020 will be known as the year of visions victories, and awakenings. Praise God. What a powerful, powerful word. Now, you know, it's real interesting when God gives us spoken words because sometimes He'll speak a word to us and it's real short and brief. And other times He'll speak a word to us and it's longer and detailed like this one. And this particular one, God gave us three unique things that are going to happen in the year of 2020 and beyond. He said it was going to be the year of visions, it was going to be the year of victories and the year of awakenings. Now, I want to read something to you, and this is out of Scripture found in Proverbs chapter 4. And when I read this to you, I want you to, and you've probably heard this ver these verses before many times, but I want you to open your eyes to listening to them this time in context reflected towards a spoken word, whether that's this spoken word or another one. Because remember, I said earlier that when God gives us a prophetic word for the year, that word operates like a lamppost or a guiding post for us that where it gives us, helps to give us direction. So I want to read to you now out of Proverbs chapter 4, and we're going to go verses 20 through 27. So Proverbs chapter 4, verses 20 through 27, and I'm going to read it to you out of the New King James. It says, My son, give attention to my words, and climb your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them, and health to their all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. Put away from you a deceitful mouth, and put perverse lips far from you. Let your eyes look straight ahead, and your eyelids look right before you. Ponder the path of your feet, and let all your ways be established. Do not turn to the right or the left, Remove your foot from evil. Now, why would I read this to you? 
I want to tell you that there's something so profound within this. And God was showing this to me as he had delivered us the spoken word. And as I was preparing for this message, he showed me these scriptures that he wanted me to read. He was showing me that so often that you'll have believers that they'll focus on a spoken word for a little bit. In fact, I just felt it in the spirit. There are others sometimes who will watch a message like this or hear a spoken word, I should say. And they'll say, you know what? There's just so many different people speaking so many different things. It's almost like it's diluted their value. It just doesn't have the same value as it used to. But I'm going to tell you that's not so. In the time we're operating, God said he would pour out his spirit upon all flesh. That means young or old. That means male or female. And we're living in a time that with the advancements in technology today, you're able to get more word to you than you ever have been in the past. You're able to discover more teachers and more ministries that are out there. And yeah, you have different types of ministry and different sizes or calibers of ministry. But you have to understand that the closer we get to the end, God is speaking his word to his body. He's speaking his word to his bride. The bride of Christ is the body of Christ. And he's preparing us for this wedding feast that's coming. But in doing so, we have a part to play. We have a great soul harvest that's operating right now that we need to be a part of. Even in this word, he told us that awakening, he gave us three specific things. He said visions, victories, and awakenings. And in awakenings, one of the things he explained to us is that the body of Christ has been talking about revival, revival, revival. But if you study what usually triggers revival, usually something significant happens that drives people to the church. Now, God can certainly do that through a move of his spirit. He said in here that in this time that people who have ignored him, people who refuse to acknowledge him, that in this time they'd have no choice. Now, let me break that down a little bit because when God said that, I was like, man, that's such a strong word. God gives everybody a choice to follow him. That's up to you. You don't have to follow him. You know, I've heard Kenneth Copeland say before in teachings that, you know, if you believe it, it'll work. If you don't, it won't. <laughs> so when you're listening to teachings, if you hearken to the voice of God, if you hearken to his words, to his teachings, if you believe it and apply it, it'll work. And if you don't, it won't. No big deal. You know, it's not my job to force anybody to follow this word. It's not my job to force anybody to follow God's word in general or the teachings that he gives us or that others that he's given others. Why? Because my responsibility is to teach. But as a believer, it's your responsibility to believe. It's your responsibility to take those teachings, those things that you've learned and take them before God. You should never take my word or someone else's just for it, just off the cuff. If we've earned that type of rapport with you or, or you know, a point of respect in your life, praise God, thank you for that. That's a high honor. But you should still always take everything to God and vet it through Him. You should vet it against His Word, His Bible, His spoken Word, His living Word. And the reason why spoken words don't end at the end of a year is because when He speaks them, they may begin at the beginning of the year, but they carry on until the future. They'll continue to grow and not like a bell that you hit and it rings loudly at first, but then kind of dissipates and fades away. No, his word gets louder and louder and louder because it's a living word. But oftentimes believers treat them like that. They'll be loud at the beginning of the year. They'll treat them like a New Year's resolution. It'll be loud at the beginning of the year, but start to dissipate or start to wane or fade off. But I'm going to tell you that we need to keep these words in front of us like it talks about in Habakkuk 2.2. That we write the vision down and make it plain. So that anyone who were to walk by could read it and run with it. These are words we need to write on the tablet of our heart. I constantly go back and review the spoken words that God's given this ministry. And I look at them and I keep them in front of me because I know they're still growing. And so many times I see them operating so strong. Stronger now than they even did in the year they were given. And in the year they were given, they operated strong. But it's like they're growing even more. Ministries that we follow, that we listen to, that we respect and trust the word to come from. We'll listen to the spoken words that they've given. And we don't ever judge them and say, well, that's not what God spoke to our ministry. We don't ever do that. We understand that that's a specific word he gave to them to grow through them for the body of Christ that they're touching. 
Well, I'm part of that body of Christ that they're touching. And as I listen to that, it feeds me as a believer. It feeds my family. And we ask the Lord, Lord, what's our responsibility in this? What's our plan to play in this, Father God? You know, you have to understand that when God gives us spoken words and He turns around and gives us assignments in life, as believers, we have some assignment to that. We have a role to play with that. We can't just go plop ourselves down on the couch and as the believers say, well, I'm just going to sit here until it happens. No, we got to turn around and do some work with it. And diligence means something to the Lord. It's something that He's very keen on. And so as we turn around and grow and we study the words, we have to ask ourselves, Lord, what does this word mean to me? What do you want me to take from this word and grow with? 2020 is going to be the year of visions, victories, and awakenings. For me personally, I'm thinking visions. Man, I'm a big person about vision. God's always showing me vision about the future. I'm constantly pl- uh, uh, you know, setting up goals and turning around and focus them and creating plans on how to achieve them. Whether that be in our ministry or our personal life, you know, our family's life. Things that we have goals that we want to achieve. You know, sometimes it can be giving goals, things that we want to turn around and be a blessing. We want to stretch ourselves and be able to be even more generous the next year than we were the year before that. Simple things, even like that. The year of victories, man, I don't know about you, but I know there's some things I've been standing for. There's some things I prayed long time ago that sometimes God will refresh to me and let me know that it's still before Him, that I still need to be speaking into it, that I still need to be speaking to it. Those are things that are strong that He shows us. And then in addition to that, I need to understand that victories, that means victories over things that I'm not even aware of yet. So it means I'm going to be at peace. You know, Psalms 46.10 says to be still and know that I'm God. That means that when new things come up and the enemy's trying to shake or rattle our cage, so to speak, I'm going to stand rooted in God's Word, standing firm in it. And I've got a spoken word because God loves me so much. His Bible, the Word found in His Bible, is more than enough. I don't need to know every scripture. I can certain around. I can just focus on one and know it. But He's given me a spoken word to speak to me because He loves me and He blesses me. 2020 will be the known as the year of victories, visions, and awakenings. Guys, if this teaching has spoken to you, then we want to invite you to connect with us on our website. You can find us at neilreyes.com where we post all of our teachings available to stream 24 hours a day at no charge to you. And if these teachings are speaking to you, then we encourage you to share them with a friend. You can find us on our social media, on YouTube. You can turn around and find us on Twitter or on Facebook. If these teachings are meaning something to you, then we invite you to connect with us and share them with your circle so that you can begin to help to minister to others along with us. Guys, as always, we want to remind you that Jesus is Lord and He loves you and so do we. Thank you and have a blessed day. Thank you for taking the time to stop by and grow with us today. If you would like more information or would like to support or partner with Neil Reyes Ministries, please visit our website at neilreyes.com. Or you can mail us at Neil Reyes Ministries, P.O. Box 586, Fort Worth, Texas, 76052. Today's episode of Champions Walk was brought to you by the faithful partners and supporters of Neil Reyes Ministries, who are joining us in our assignment of waking up the church, setting the captives free, and together we're reaching the lost.